Yo, what is going on guys and welcome back to a new video on my channel. Today there's a little bit of a different background and also hopefully the microphone is good enough. Hopefully the lighting doesn't bother you. But anyways, I wanted to make this video because we are gonna start the new Formula 1 season in less than one and a half days. It's currently Saturday night. <laughs> it's like 2 a.m. <laughs> 2.30 and I'm recording this video because I still wanted to record it finally I've never done that but a pre-season prediction of what's gonna happen in this season so this video is gonna be split up it's not gonna be very long I'm trying to keep it as short as I can and it's gonna be crazy predictions we'll pick three of those then I will give you the driver standings and then I will give you the constructor standings and I'm going because I guess that's the most interesting bits of it and I'm gonna list the driver standings from top to bottom same with the constructors because I know a lot of youtubers do it the opposite way just so you have to watch until the end if you want to watch the video until to uh, until the end do it I would highly appreciate it and also leave a comment subscribe and hit the bell like support and check out the socials would much appreciate that crazy prediction number one Fernando Alonso is definitely gonna win at least one GP this year 100%, you've heard it here, for the Alonso fans, El Plan is working finally. I'm super convinced about it. Number two, Carlos Sainz is gonna be Charles Leclerc. I know it's a big claim, but I actually rate Carlos highly in terms of skill. I think Charles has more raw talent, but Carlos, if he gets used to a car, is insanely efficient and with the new regulations he struggled more to be on Charles's pace and with Fred Vasseur he was a big fan of Carlos there's maybe a chance that Carlos might beat him and um, yeah so I think potentially we will see Carlos be really competitive this year and actually beat Charles in the driver standings and the third yeah for the Tifosis Ferrari is gonna win the constructors I'm gonna say it right here and right now the car looked fairly decent, race pace wise and testing, not that much. Now practice one, practice two is over, I actually didn't really look at the times, but I think they were fairly solid. I don't know, I actually didn't pay attention. Like seriously, I'm not trying to claim anything in case they were insane or something. Um, but I, oh no, I've seen one screenshot on Twitter where all the purple sectors were Carlos, Leclerc, Carlos I think. So, there you can see Carlos good. Maybe it was the opposite way, but it was at least Ferrari land today. They were strong last year. They might be strong this year again on Bahrain. Maybe it's track dependent, but I think Ferrari is going to learn from their mistakes last year. And they have a really, really strong driver lineup and a new team principal. So I wish them all the best and I believe they will win it this year. So, but let's talk about the driver standings. P1 goes to, you probably think Charles, like, uh, Charles Leclerc, Carlos Sainz, because I said Carlos would beat him. I will say it's gonna be Max Verstappen. He's not gonna dominate this year, but Max and Red Bull, they are so efficient. I still think the Red Bull will probably be the fastest car, but it might still be difficult to handle for Checo. He struggled over the last two years to keep up with Max's pace. I think similar average gap to previous teammates. So I will put Max Verstappen as champion. I still think he will outperform the Ferrari, but Ferrari duo, is gonna be right there in P2 I will have Carlos Sainz and P3 Charles Leclerc and that's how they are gonna seal off the constructors it will not be as dominant as last year from Max but it will still be I think fairly decent margin to Sainz and then in P4 of course would make sense Checo Paris because it's still kind of the fastest car at least that's what I'm expecting it to be um, but he's Probably, I would wish I would be wrong here because I think Checo is a great guy. I hope he can be up there, but for now I think he's gonna be P4. P5, Lewis Hamilton is gonna beat his teammate George Russell, so he's gonna be in P5. And P6, Plan, Fernando Alonso. I think Fernando is gonna be on it this year. He has now finally a car probably again, if it's not just testing and they didn't send back at all. I think Fernando Alonso is going to be the one to look out for. He's going to be the underdog 
and I hope that he's gonna fight for the title but that will be such a massive step from S Martin compared to last year I don't want to call it too early but if that would happen I would be really happy to see it I think Fernando Alonso in P6 that's quite realistic P7 George Russell I think he's gonna he George is such a great driver you know but I want to spice it up a little bit. This is actually not me thinking that George is bad. It's literally just, I think Fernando is going to have an insane season and Lewis is going to be on top of Fernando still. Right between, it's going to be Fernando and then Russell. And it's going to be super tight. So probably maybe a DNF here and there or something going wrong. Maybe a crash like in Silverstone. And it can all like turn around. I think George is still going to be insane. Probably also gonna get a victory at least this year. I think Lewis is also gonna win this year again. Another prediction. Um, but I think Russell might be behind of, of Lewis for 2023. So yeah, that's why he's P7. P8, Lance Stroll, because he's not gonna be up there with Fernando Alonso. But I still think Aston Martin, Aston Martin is gonna be best of the rest. The top three team is still gonna be fairly similar um, to previous years. Then we have in P9, Pierre Gasly. He's going to outperform Ocon and there's going to be a lot of friction between the two on track and maybe also off track. I don't know. I mean, there, there were rumors about their past, but I don't really believe in that. I think they are professionals. They get along with it. But if there's something happening on track, it's going to be quite intense. And we've seen it also with Alonso and Ocon. They had so much respect. It's always the same. I feel like Ocon is kind of a troublemaker with that uh, with his teammates. He's maybe the main cause. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe everyone is treating him not nice. <laughs> but I think Gasly is going to beat Ocon. And Ocon is going to be close in P10. Um, and right behind Bottas. Because I think the Alfa Romeo is quite strong. And Valtteri Bottas, I mean, he was always up there. He sometimes beat Lewis. He's an incredible driver. And I feel like an Alfa Romeo... He's actually performing better than at Mercedes at most times, so he's gonna seal it off fairly easily. Ahead of P12, which is gonna be Lando Norris. I don't have too much faith in McLaren this year because they looked a bit sketchy in preseason testing, but who knows? Um, would be nice to see them at least fighting for the midfield. Um, which sounds wrong because it's McLaren. I, I wish McLaren would fight for the wins. That would be great and having Lando Norris, Oscar Piastri up there. So P12 is going to be Lando Norris, P13, a solid season from Zhou Guan Yu. I think you pronounce it Zhou Guan Yu. I still, I always get it wrong. Sorry if I messed up the order. He's a legend. Um, but he's going to be beaten by Bottas again. I think Bottas is just so experienced and I mean he had to deal with Lewis. If Zhou can actually beat him not by just DNFs. That would be quite something, honestly. I rate him highly, but I think Bottas is still going to be ahead. Not much, but with some margin. Then we have Tsunoda in P14. I think most people underestimate Yuki. I think he's going to be up for the task this year. Yeah, sure, the freeze is a Formula E champion. And um, he is really talented. But I have faith in Yuki. I think he's going to make it. I think Yuki is definitely going to be... The number one driver for Alfa Tauri is also going to bring home the most points for them. In P15, we have Kevin Magnussen. Um, I think Haas is going to have a fairly normal season as previous years. Sometimes decent, most of the times looking maybe average or a bit less than average. And um, Magnussen is just going to outperform the car, or not outperform it, but is going to get the most out of the car every once in a while and pick up these vital points to get ahead in the teammate game and score a few points for Haas which are going to be important in the end for them. Um, but in P16 I have the teammate of Yuki Tsunoda, Nick De Vries. I think he's going to have a solid season but it's still his first season so I don't want to put him too high, I don't want to put him too low. I think it is maybe a bit too low but um, he's experienced from racing, he's a great driver but still have some question marks. I, I didn't follow his career too much, so let's see how he's gonna do. I wish him all the best. For Oscar Piastri, I might make myself a bit unpopular there. I rate him a lot, but I still think with all of that pressure that he had and with that stuff that happened last year and now McLaren looking worse than Alpine, there's gonna be lots of pressure on him and he will deal with it well, 
but then he also has to deal with an experienced, talented Lando Norris. So it might be quite a lot in the first season as a rookie, dealing with a team that is not looking in shape right now, at least preseason testing, a lot of question marks. Um, so I believe Oscar is going to struggle every now and then. Maybe he's going to take a few races and then he's going to be up there with Lando. But these few races before Lando is just going to create a solid gap. And it's going to be hard for Oscar to catch that. And I think other drivers might be, especially if McLaren's form might increase over the season. Um, it will look a bit better for him later on. But I think at the beginning of the season he's going to struggle a bit. Um, maybe not. So a lot of people rate him really highly. I also do so, but... I still try and have a look at it a little bit from a perspective where maybe things could go wrong for a few of the drivers. Nico Hülkenberg I think is going to be fairly solid but only in P18, nothing special, the Haas is just not going to be incredible and Nico is going to get beaten by Magnussen because Magnussen is going to have these few performances like Brazil last year where he's just excelling. I think Nico still struggles with the podium, so Magnussen, I think, has it. And in P19, we have my boy Albono23, Alex. Unfortunately, I don't think Williams is going to be up for the task again. I hope they will improve in the future. Such a historic and prestigious team. It would be nice to see them back up there in Formula 1. And um, as P20, last place in F1 2023 and the official Formula 1 championship is going to be Logan Sargent as a rookie. Um, I think people underestimate how good he is. He fought in F3, I think, with Piastri for the title. And I think a few things went wrong. It could have been like a bit different luck and he would have won it. So I think he's going to be alright. He's going to do alright. People should probably put him up there with the level of skill from Piastri. Maybe. I know Piastri won F4, I think, F3, F2, then had the break. But even that one break here, maybe it hurts him a little bit. Maybe he's a little bit rusty and it takes him a bit longer. I don't know. We will see. We will find out. But P20 is low Sargent. So that is my top 20 for the driver standings. You can let me down. Um, you, you can let me know down below if you think I'm stupid. <laughs> or if you actually agree with most. and Or maybe change it. Copy it. Paste it in some way. And... Change your order and tell me, okay, you agree with this, maybe that, or... Would be interesting to see. Then, let's quickly run through the constructors. Because we already have the reason for the drivers. P1, Ferrari. I think, yeah, they are not the strategic masterclass team. But they are going to sort out a lot of things this year with Fred Vasseur. Um, the team is going to be stronger, Carlos more experienced, and probably also easier for him to drive in the new car. Because he's now used to it. At the, at the end of last season, he, he looked fairly strong. Uh, Charles also going to do really well. Um, Red Bull P2, really close band. It will be super tight at the end. Maybe even finish in the last race in Abu Dhabi. Um, it's going to be down to Checo. Again, having a gap to Max. And that's going to hurt Red Bull. And maybe then for next year, they will decide, okay, they are looking for a different driver. Who knows? Um, P3, Mercedes. I think that's quite reasonable. They are going to be much closer to uh, Red Bull and Ferrari, but it's still not going to be enough from what it looked at testing. Maybe I'm wrong. I honestly, I, I wish we would have... <sighs> this year it would be so great to have Lewis fighting, Charles, Max and Fernando Alonso for the title. That would be such a dream. Alright. So, P4, S. Martin, P5, Alpine, P6, Alfa Romeo, P7 McLaren, P8 Alpha Tauri, and P9 we have Haas, final team Williams, and yeah, that's about it. Let me know down below what you think. Who's gonna win the constructors? Who's gonna win the driver standings? And maybe you want to share your full top 20 and top 10 rating, and maybe some crazy predictions. Would love to hear them. Anyways, thank you very much for watching and enjoy the first race in Bahrain on Sunday. I wish you all the best. Thank you for tuning in, and. I will see you in the next one. You Marcel, peace.